Oh, is it on slides for now, sir? Yeah. No, it's fine. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, so should I start from here or the slide, sir? Yeah, you can just leave it here, the covering slide. Okay. Perfect. Let me just check the YouTube uh, stream is on. Okay. Okay, my YouTube live now. Great. Okay, so we'll just wait for a couple of minutes. So, so everyone, how was the day? How was college? Day was good, sir. So <laughs> much work, work's going on. Hmm. Uh, and then we have outreach programs coming up. So what's behind that? Like we're starting full-fledged after some time. So, hmm. Yeah, so now that really things have gone back to normal, right? Yes. So you'd be having all of that. Yes. So waiting for the camp on Friday. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually heading back to Davangere tonight. Like So yeah. tomorrow and day after again, camps, camps. So we have the uh, week all lined up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I also is Friday and then mostly it's on weekends on Sundays. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, where are the peripheral centers uh, for your college? Uh, sir, we have one in Yalanka Government Hospital mm -hmm. and one in uh, Devanahalli. Devanahalli. Yes. We are starting up one more uh, satellite center in our PHC nearby. Mm -hmm. So discussions regarding that are going on. So hopefully it should start soon. So you have your uh, uh, dental setup there or you take your MDU and... Uh... Uh, we have dental setups in both uh, satellite centers. Mm -hmm. The new one, which is still under discussion, it's almost it's almost uh, done. So the dental setup has to be set up in the PHC. There's no dental setup there as, as of now. Okay. All right. Am I audible enough, sir? I'm not. Yeah, just... Exactly. That's, that's clear enough. Okay. Okay. So we'll just wait for a minute or so and then we can start off. <clears throat> So, so you're leaving tonight? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm traveling back tonight. Yes. You're driving back? Mm, yeah, no, I'm taking the bus. So. Okay. so, yesterday was all ruckus. What <laughs> in the day to drive? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> The PG exam dates are out, by the way. Thank you. Yes, got June 13th, I believe. June 13th, right. Okay. Wow, we had ours in July. Hmm. It was supposed to happen in June, but then it got postponed. The starting of July, and then it got postponed to end of July. Okay. All right. So I think uh, we're good to go. I'll just... Uh, Say hello to everyone. Okay, good evening, everyone who's joined us here and uh, as well as on the PhD 101 YouTube channel. Uh, good evening uh, to all our teacher students and uh, UG and PG students. Uh, welcome you all to PhD 101 uh, National Level uh, Learning Series for Public Health Dentistry. Today we have with us uh, Dr. Ivan Ribello. Uh, and Dr. Ivan will be taking up a very relevant and I would say a very interesting topic, which is uh, social media for oral health promotion. A little bit about background uh, for this topic, uh, especially because there's increase in the advances and uh, innovative avenues in uh, social media utilization for oral health promotion across the world. Uh, this topic is of rising importance, uh, especially for the postgraduates uh, in their examinations and how we could use uh, the best of the social media utilities uh, for effective public health interventions, whether is it at the moment of dissemination of information or it could be even uh, pushing forth as reinforcements uh, in our health education curriculum. Now, uh, at the outset, I think uh, uh, most of you would have uh, 
been familiar with a lot of IEC material, which uh, you would be a part of during your undergraduate days, either making little charts and posters, and also conducting a lot of street plays and nukkad nataks and all of these things, mainly to emphasize on uh, dental public health issues or oral health uh, issues, uh, which are of importance in the population. Now, incorporation of social media, again, uh, we are the social media generation. We are presently living in one in which uh, the media, which is uh, in, in fact the most uh, vociferous and most of utility to healthcare uh, facilities, uh, provided how it is being utilized either to popularize or to create awareness, or it could be for reinforcements, or it could be just you know dissemination of information. And especially in a post-COVID world, uh, we have across seen proactive uh, work by organizations, so right from the World Health Organizations to many of the national and international institutes, which have effectively used social media to uh, clear a lot of concepts and to provide that kind of clarity to the general population about rising awareness, about concerns, and overcome a lot of anxiety. On the other hand, uh, there are also the perils of social media, which also fosters a lot of misinformation. So I think we as uh, you know, dental public health professionals need to keep that in mind and uh, focus on a more directed approach and a more constructive approach in order to utilize it for the best of our abilities. We have with us today, Dr. Ivan, a uh, little bit of introduction about our guest speaker for today, Dr. Ivan Cliff Ribello. Uh, he has completed his MDS uh, from uh, Krishna Devaraya College of Dental Sciences, uh, very recently completed in the year 2021. Uh, he is also uh, uh, been many, you know, someone with a lot of uh, different interests, I would say, and uh, something, you know, as a public health dentist, uh, he also uh, works for uh, development of language skills uh, for school students, and he's presently affiliated with Vedantu for a lot of uh, teaching and learning assignments. He has uh, done his Bachelor of Dental Surgery from College of Dental Sciences, Daban Gere, and uh, basically hails from Angamali in Kerala. And even as someone I've known uh, grow through the uh, years as, as a very able and a competent boy, I think uh, with a lot of uh, immense potential, and I thought uh, uh, it would be really apt for him to take up this session today. So thank you so much, Ivan, for uh, taking our time for doing this uh, for our students today. And uh, with that brief introduction, I think, uh, I'll just uh, hand over the proceedings to Ivan to take up uh, the uh, the topic for us over the next 45 minutes to an hour. Thank you, Dr. Densi, for the wonderful introduction. Yes, uh, as Densi has said, I've known him for so many years. He's also been one of a very influential person for me to take up the subject of public health industries. Someone who has been very enthusiastic about the subject. And it has motivated me a lot in many ways to, and my perspective about the subject, to look at the subject. So thank you so much, sir. So shall I begin, sir? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. The topic I'm here to discuss with you all today is social media for oral health promotion. So we all know that social media is widely used by all of us. Or everyone we see have a gadget in their hand and they have access to internet and it can be used in many ways. So one way in which we can use social media is to access health information or to gain more knowledge about health. And I'm sure we would have come across patients and uh, many of our friends who, have used, who use social media extensively to get more knowledge or to get more information about a particular topic related to health. So with that context, I'm starting. So uh, we all know what health is and that various factors influence health. We, we all know that uh, behavioral, social, cultural, and many, many, many factors influence our health in a positive as well as negative way. Well, as the years passes, there are various other factors which get added or which influence these factors as well. In that way, <clears throat> we can consider technology as one such factor which influences health. So uh, technology has evolved a lot over the years and it crosses barriers. There is no limitations to the use of technology as such. So it crosses beyond borders and it can be accessed by anyone, anywhere. So, and in technology, one such platform which are used or uh, which are accessed by millions of people are social media. 
Now, what is social media? Social media is an online gathering of people where they use these conversational medias or online platforms to create, create and share contents. And these contents are shared in the form of pictures, videos, words, etc. And there are various platforms which can be used for this purpose. And I'll be discussing each of them. Um, one interesting quote which I found was by Dr. Susanna Jacob, who described, she is a, a WHO regional di uh, director of Euro, who described the intersection of electronic health with public health as a beautiful marriage that celebrates global commitment and dedication towards reaping the benefits of e-health for all. E-health is basically the application of technology to access health or healthcare needs. And public health, as we all know, we, public health deals with the health of the entire public. So this interconnection or uh, in, uh, interaction between e-health and public health is considered as a beautiful marriage. I found this word very beautiful. Okay, so what are the different types of social media? There are social networks, media sharing networks, social blogging networks, discussion networks, and review networks. Now let's look at each one of these. Social networks. We are very familiar with these logos. Uh, the first one is Facebook, the second one is Twitter, and the third one is LinkedIn. So these are online platforms which are widely used by users to create online relationships or to interact with a particular brand or with their peers. So these social networks help us <clears throat> to get new leads on a particular topic, to build relationships, as I said, and to provide or access services. So uh, Facebook, as we all know, we can share content, we can share pictures, videos, and we can uh, share information in the form of texts as well. Twitter, on the other hand, it also serves the same purpose, but there is a word limit to the amount of text that can be shared over Twitter platform. All right. Then there are media sharing networks. As the name suggests, these platforms mainly share information in the forms of pictures and videos, as you can see, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. So we can use these platforms to generate awareness in the form of, uh, by using a picture or a video. Um, yeah. Then there are blogging networks where a user can narrate down their experience or to engage particular viewers who are interested in the particular topic and they can go through the narration of the whole experience. And this is uh, Tumblr and Medium is a social is uh, an example of social blogging networks. So you can content uh, publish your content for the audience and it's a good way to build engagement and get people familiar with your content. Discussion networks, as many of us would have come across Quora, where people turn to get opinions for a particular topic or to uh, get information for a, it, uh, it, it is used in many ways for starting from minor uh, technological issues like uh, information on a gadget or a vehicle to various health-related topics are even being discussed over the platform Quora, and similar is Reddit. So these are a few examples of discussion networks. So <laughs> their uh, uh, discussion can be on news, information, and opinions, and you can get an understanding of how people perceive a particular matter. So many of us turn to these platforms for information. Review networks, examples are these are a few examples, Yelp and Glassdoor, where people put a review about a particular service or a brand or a company. So these reviews can help other people to uh, can help or direct them in, uh, when they need an opinion about a particular or before approaching a particular service. So these are made by users by reviewers for users. It cannot be influenced by the company as, as the once the opinion is placed, it cannot be taken down. So if the reviews are good, it brings a social, positive social proof for the particular service or the brand. Now, let's talk about how we can use these social media for the benefit of health. 
so that's a main topic of discussion today so the use of social media for oral health so oral health first let's talk about general health and then let's move to oral health so uh, in health, uh, this uh, health information has uh, increased because of patients uh, access to health related materials online so as the patient's access has improved increased there has been increase in publication of health related information by both public as well as private sources so um, i said earlier it is not uh, technology it crosses boundaries it can be used by people of various countries people of various races various creeds everything and uh, so these they can use this uh, this uh, social media or online platform to access this information from wherever they are in the confines of their comfort zone so what are the benefits of using social media ease of interaction as i said if a person has a particular so person wants to get uh, information on a particular topic or a brand they can easily interact with others who have had similar experience so have already availed the service or they who or they can turn to their friends to get information before heading out and getting the service and information is easily available it can be tapered down to precisely what they want to know it is widely accessible can be accessed by people anywhere anytime and if uh as i said uh, peer support emotional support and social support uh, the opinion of the public and in case a doctor has given some uh, information or some health related advice to the patient or some uh, information the patient can be monitored easily using a social media platform by the doctor how does the social media platform facilitate uh, communication provide online consultations we uh, it had been extensively used during this covid era where it was almost impossible to go out and consult a doctor and during this time of crisis many many have turned to had turned to online consultation now situation is turning back to normal so during that time of covid crisis online consultations were actually a boon to many patients who could gain access to the doc doctor in the confines of their home and also the doctor can readily uh, access the patient's experience and opinion on the service that he or she has provided to the patient also the patient can get answers for their doubts or health related questions whatever they may have now uh, let me talk about some of the best uh, social uh, health uh campaigns which are which were uh, conducted around the world using social media here for you was a campaign conducted by instagram to break the stigma associated with mental health world lung foundation packhead it was a a campaign conducted by the world lung foundation where yeah world lung foundation where the users were uh, motivated to share pictures of rotten teeth and tumors and all that to create awareness or uh, to uh, uh, create awareness about tobacco induced cancers it uh, they could share pictures of anyone they have seen or their friends or anyone suffering from cancers due to tobacco similar is a campaign called chew on this hashtag #fckhiv is a campaign conducted by mtv where it uh, motivated youth to undergo hiv testing and share a picture of the finger in which they got tested man therapy is a campaign where uh, young men were encouraged to seek out for mental health to break the stigma that strong men do not need help sehat ka batwa is also known as health first is a campaign by mahendra rice foundation where uh, village women save money inside their blouse and this <clears throat> was used as a campaign to create awareness um, uh, to create awareness about breast cancer and love your cervix is another campaign 
which uh, motivated people, young women especially, to uh, undergo or to not be embarrassed and to go ahead and get a cervical screening done for cervical cancers. Uh, another interesting thing which I came across is a game where a dead man lies on a table and uh, the player is provided with a scalpel and a knife where he dissects the dead man and it's, uh, it is a uh, death which happened due to tobacco and the user has to find out the reason why, what about due to which cancer, as you know, to tobacco causes many kinds of cancer due to what kind of cancer, which organ was affected and how the individual died. Now let's come to social media for oral health promotion. So how can we use social media? We, we, uh, for a dentist, how is social media beneficial? The dentist can use social media to promote their services, procedures and special offers which they may have. And which was discussed earlier, it is very easy for the dentist to get a feedback from the patient. And it's also easier for the dentist to discuss a case with his colleagues or other fellow dentists with the use of social media. Compared to earlier times, it, uh, it wouldn't have been, it would have been very tedious or time consuming to, for a dentist to go to another dentist and discuss a particular case. But now it's, it's all very easy with the uh, evolution of technology or with the powerful gadgets or media media devices which we have in our hands, it can uh, the discussions on various cases can be done directly um, by uh, the dentist. Okay, and uh, in case the dentist need a particular uh, assistance with a specialty while performing a procedure on his own, he can use his social media to. Um, Help, uh, to get help or assistance from another dentist. And obviously we can, uh, there are so many journals and articles and uh, we can uh, get information about various products and publications using social media. So how does it benefit the patient? It's easier for the patient to get any information on health related topics, especially oral health related um procedures and topics and the patient can give the feedback on the particular experience of the dentist and uh, the dent it is easier for the dentist to share any info uh, articles uh, or to promote health or to prevent diseases oral health diseases and a particular treatment type with the patient and if the social media is, is used effectively it is a very very able or efficient platform in delivering a health message. Let's look at some of the uh, applications. There are a lot of applications. I just listed out a few which I found interesting. So a dental expert is an application for the smartphones, which uh, helps a patient to get an idea about a particular procedure. It is like a guide for the patient on what the patient should expect and what the procedure would contain. Dental care and coronavirus is again the assistance during COVID time on uh, any dental issues. Or uh, um, American Dental Association <coughs> even used this uh, dental care and coronavirus app to uh, um, let the public know that dental services back, were back to track once the situation was under control. Braces Help is an app to help people with braces. And Brush DJ is an app uh, where the, uh, the gadget plays randomly selected songs for two minutes so that during a brushing time, so that uh, it helps the individual know that he's completed brushing for the duration of two minutes. And My Smile, it helps the person or the user compare the shade of his teeth with 15 shades provided in the app. Um, this was a, uh, my, my, mouth, my mouth proud challenge was a campaign uh, during World Oral Health Day 
where users were encouraged to take selfies of their teeth and share them to raise the awareness of uh, awareness that a healthy mouth is a happy mouth so what all are the limitations with everything there is a good side and a bad side if not used judiciously so what all can be the problems associated with social media as i said information is readily available there are a lot of information pouring in and uh, you people wouldn't know what to rely on and uh, what to believe so there's a lack of reliability it wouldn't not all information are proven and quality wise also there are various procedures to do a particular treatment or uh, uh, if the patient does follows a particular uh, health guide he found he or she found online and uh, he performs it on his own there is a concern on the quality or how well it is explained or how well the patient perceives it information overload is again the same thing there are a lot of information you wouldn't uh, the uh, a common man wouldn't know which to trust and which not to trust question of confidentiality whether <coughs> the uh, social media platform which is being used to discuss a case whether is it actually just between the dentist and the they are very confidential information that should only stay between the patient and the dentist and then misleading advices i'm sure many of us would have come across patients who refer to google without before coming to us for treatment and they would already have uh, more opinion about a particular procedure or a treatment than before we even start the treatment so uh, not all of them would be right some even procedures can be misleading for the patient as a patient wouldn't know uh, the scientific background before behind that particular uh procedure or the disease in correct app application again if the uh, the perception of the patient what they read when what they understand and how they apply it if it is not if their perception is different from uh, what was to be conveyed that is also a drawback and again people rely on information from the net so they think that it is okay even if they don't visit a health professional and they can treat themselves which can lead to very very bad consequences um some studies on application of social media for oral health promotion uh the eastern mediterranean regional office or world health organization of uh, world health organization bahrain in 2009 conducted a study to assess the promotion of physical activity through uh, mass media and they found out that health promotion campaign was a success through the use of social media platforms such as instagram and facebook another study by alshamari et al in 2017 where uh, uh, social media was used in health education and health promotion uh, which uh, <clears throat> which found out that instagram whatsapp and normal messaging were the most preferred media among people of saudi arabia and uh, Uh, the study also found out that it was a successful practice to use these social media platforms to send health education related messages to the intended population or the target population one more study i would like to quote is shriman et al conducted a study to evaluate the effectiveness of the white teeth mobile app which is a theory based mobile health program for promoting oral hygiene in uh, orthodontic patients the results of the study showed that uh patients with fixed orthodontic appliances can be helped or can be assisted to improve their oral hygiene when uh, the usual care or the normal uh, regular visit to the dentist is combined with the app that provides oral health education and coaching that is the white teeth mobile app so these are few uh, instances or examples where social media help social media actually helps in promoting oral health wellness technology as we all know we all are uh, in an era where even our watches tell us the state of our health 
our heartbeat, our respiratory rate, our sleep cycle. So uh, gadgets and mobile apps, there are apps which are linked to gadgets like watches and it helps the individuals track their own health. And uh, so it helps to analyze habits and activities, alerts the user if the habits or their activities are not satisfactory or detrimental to their health and give suggestions to maximize their wellness. So what all are the ethical uh, concerns of these? As I said, privacy of the people, whether the information that is being shared or discussed, is it actually private or is it very confidential? And is it an honest tool for, to actually help the patient or to spread a particular propaganda or to instill some thought into the user's mind or <clears throat> to make them believe this is true? Or are we actually helping them? Does uh, the, uh, the use of the social media, does it violate the integrity of the user? For instance, uh, yeah. Does it violate the integrity of a user? Is it actually ac acceptable to the patient? And whether is it actually information which helps the patient? Sorry, is it uh, just general information or knowledge which actually helps the patient to improve their health and oral health? Uh, this is Dr. Bill, Dr. Yaska, Dr. Michael and Dr. Uh, I forgot his name actually, but he's known as the smiling dentist. These, they are social media influencers or dentists. <laughs> singing or smiling dentist? <laughs> Sorry, singing dentist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they are social media influencers. They have used their uh, social media handles to promote their uh, procedures or uh, to promote their practice as well as to generate awareness among their followers as well as their patients. So um, uh, they all have like a lot of followers and even uh, I follow the singing dentist on Instagram, I don't know his name. <laughs> so yeah, so they, they use social media as a tool to reach out to the people and to bring generate awareness as well as to make people aware. So they are some really good examples on how to use social media for uh, being a dentist for the public. I'm also aware about a lot of my friends and being seniors and juniors where they use social media and they have really good practices and they use these social media to generate awareness. Uh, a junior of mine, she she uploads regular videos or reels on Instagram where she gives instructions on brushing, how often do you have to change your toothbrush. Being dentist, all those would be like uh, very familiar information for us, but for the general public, this all might be like very new information for many and it would really help them. Um, no, not many would be aware of those kind of information. And I felt that she's doing a really good job in doing that. Because our Instagram and uh, Facebook and we would have people out of the dental community and all this would be uh, a help or yeah, all this would help them. So, I'm at the end of my presentation already. <laughs> so, yeah, we all have technology in our hands. It is a very powerful weapon. And it is going to be, it is already a part of our life and it is going to be a part of life in the years coming. So, we might as well utilize it. And we being doctors, we have another tool that is a tool of knowledge and we can use this uh, social media along with our knowledge to prevent diseases as well as to promote patient health. So we yeah, are explaining and implementing newly developed technologies for healthcare providers and patients can contribute to patient-centered model of disease prevention and health promotion. Thank you. All right. So I think that was a very uh, crisp presentation, uh, Ivan, uh, mainly highlighting the implications of uh, social media and the usage into the different areas uh, of uh, dental public health or dentistry at, at large. Yeah. So I think uh, at the outset, I think uh, not many of us or very few or hardly a few of us 
are actually sufficiently using social media, uh, whether is it in terms of creating patient awareness or is it in boosting patient education. So these are the uh, very important aspects uh, which could be done. Uh, just add to some of the points what Ivan mentioned here. Uh, globally, when it comes to uh, creating uh, uh, you know, information or infographics, um, all the public health institutes or from the CDC to the ICMR, uh, they do have their regular publications and they have their social media handles. So organizational work also um, uh, plays a very important uh, role. In fact, uh, related to the Press Information Bureau as well from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So uh, we do have a lot of uh, people. Uh, now, what we need to understand here is uh, when um, most of our patients and our students and anything, whether it's uh, uh, being a teacher, you want to utilize or maximize uh, uh, the importance of uh, social media, or it could be even as a clinician, looking at the patient inflow as well. Uh, I think all our population is already online. So and I think it's very high time that the teacher or the doctor uh, falls you know, uh, in, into uh, the tandem with the patients and regularly help you know, boost uh, either their practice or to effectively try new teaching, learning methods and so alike. So I think we're just at the beginning of, of this, especially as we call it the social media 2.0 revolution. And uh, that's a very important concept, uh, which is there. Okay, so uh, I think we'd like to open up the uh, house for discussion. Let's hear some perspectives from people. Uh, hello there. Hi, I can see Arya is joined in there. Uh, Dr. Krishna Priya is there again, the faculty. Uh, if you could quickly pitch in and uh, share your thoughts, guys. Sahar is also here. Okay. Uh, our, anyone can go ahead and please uh, share their thoughts. Uh, I'm presuming Bhavna is a postgraduate, uh, Gauri as well. I'm not familiar. Any questions you all have, anything you want to share in relation, and that will be really welcome. So I just had a small uh, activity. Actually, we wanted, we wanted to share some profiles and you know, just to have a look at some of the details, but yeah, we'll just come to that in a bit. <clears throat> uh, Ivan, have you come across any uh, PGs or any de departments where they've had uh, given this as an LD topic? If anybody has put together information? No, sir. I, I think it's a really good topic. A new yeah, topic it is. Topic mm. taken up as a dissertation, library dissertation topic. Okay. My uh, head of department, Dr. Murli, sir, he had actually come up. Uh, we as we we use this uh, WHO forms to fill to fill the findings, right, in uh, outreach programs. Mm. So, sir, as a a bit nature lover, and he wanted to cut down on the use of paper, so he worked on developing an app that can be used in a laptop and can be entered. And so for statistics of the, to, find, to compile the statistics of the findings also it would have been very easy, but it was still under trial and error. <laughs> we had used it a couple of times, but then as in every outreach program, there won't be facilities to charge a laptop and all that. So we face and then we used it where facilities were available and you know, hoping to implement it in the long run. Okay. One more question which I had was, uh, mm, if anyone wants to start building on app, like, you know, um, if uh, they want to like, for example, for dental public health, um, would you recommend like, you know, departments to have their own uh, apps like in colleges, uh, which could be used for health promotion? Or have you come across any of that? Oral health promotion. Um, Which could be like, you know, um, um, put on the Play Store or something for all the patients. Once they get the uh, OPD done, I think uh, uh, we could look into that. <clears throat> I think there are uh, colleges like Savita where all the patient information is being uh, gathered. Yeah, it is still, uh, it has been digitized, uh, digitized, but then putting into the uh, social media platform, of course, there are the concerns of uh, data privacy and 
security breach. So uh, not the patient details, but what we could start off with is uh, having like a small desk at the OP counter where we could have a couple of interns or PGs uh, who could use the digital medium and basically use the mobile apps, which are either available for free or, or the colleges could develop their own. And it's, it's very much doable in, in the present uh, day and era. And uh, that probably once once you have an app on your phone, you know, like you have notifications for everything. Like we're, we're programmed to be more alert to a notification on our phone rather than someone calling us ahead in, for real. So given that attention span, I think uh, uh, that could be one of the things we could look into that. Yes, sir, definitely. Hmm. Okay. And then, then uh, as I said, like uh, we can cut down on the use of papers and all that hmm. and maintaining the documents storage and uh, oh yeah all that wouldn't be a hassle if this is in place yes yeah so i think a lot of uh, options are there i think we just need to start uh, coming out of the uh, mold and then uh, look into that okay uh, yeah, just about... into the conventional and prefer to stick on to the conventional ways <laughs> it takes time okay uh, we have Dr. Arya who has uh, shared her thoughts here. She says the potential reach and impact of social media uh, in promoting health is will still being scratched upon. Yeah, we absolutely uh, agree with that. Uh, no concrete efforts have been done. Of course, we can achieve more. Uh, Quit Now and Smoke Free app for tobacco cessation is, uh, is something to begin with, which is already available for, for the patients if they need to seek and how, how we can channelize this. So I think uh, we need to have uh, more you know, deliberations on this and this could be a good starting point for as well. Thank you, thank you, Arya, for your uh, thoughts as well. Thank you. Okay, so I think that brings us to the end of the session for today. Uh, we're really happy uh, that we touched upon a, a topic like this. Uh, this has been requested again, you know, um, has appeared actually uh, twice in the papers previously, which uh, relate to uh, social media or usage of media for dental public health or advocacy issues. I think uh, that is something which uh, is there. And uh, uh, that's really important for us to take this forward. So from PhD 101, we'd like to really thank Dr. Evan for uh, taking this topic uh, and uh, sharing his inputs and uh, very well researched. And a lot of new things we did learn today, you know, identify about uh, what could be the various uh, kinds of apps which are available. So as a you know, token of appreciation, uh, we really thank Ivan for the session today. Thank you, so Ivan. I would like to extend my gratitude to my academic mentor, Dr. Mansi, who helped me with the presentation. Ma'am gave her inputs. I had missed out on a lot of things and because Ma'am told me, I added to many of the uh, topics which I discussed about. So... Thank you so much, ma'am, for that. I don't know if ma'am is here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, yeah, I think we just got another reply in the chat box. Yeah. Bhavna says uh, all these social media apps are used by urban people. What about rural? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, just to put some uh, facts into place, Bhavna. Uh, in fact, uh, the digital penetration of the mobile apps uh, is uh, the difference is hardly negligible between the urban and the rural population as of now uh, simply because uh, it doesn't require any prerequisite skills uh, as long as you can provide data and there's wi-fi uh, and there's internet connectivity into the different parts of the country i think this is a very very uh, potent and a huge uh, you know weapon in, in this direction uh, of course, we could customize the apps uh, uh, for the rural population by putting them into the local language. Uh, like if, if you are based in Maharashtra or in Andhra Pradesh, you could also have it in the regional language, which again, most of the uh, features allow it to do, whether it's a beta version or, and once you do that. So automatically it becomes more user-friendly, the UI, which is the user interface. Uh, all these are the technical aspects, uh, which uh, we need to work with people from different specialities and uh, get that forward. Yeah. Any any points you'd like to add, Ivan, to that? Sir, I feel in, uh, in this particular point, uh, in this particular uh, uh, thing, Bhavna asked, language is the only barrier. I don't think technology is yeah. limited or restricted to these people. So, yeah, as you said, language barrier. Language is the only yeah. barrier. Uh, the major thing, uh, Bhavna, is uh, 
technology has uh, acclimatized uh, the population despite uh, uh, whether the patient is you know aware or not aware and all of these things and uh, it ultimately focuses on user friendly nature and comprehensibility so a lot of the apps which are already available you know if whether it's the digital payment apps or the mobile games or it's the general social networking apps like you know facebook or instagram on all of that uh, you do have a lot of uh, flexibility there so there's no impediment as such for the rural population uh, yes again you know once we have data and everybody when we empower the population again india is you know uh, the fastest growing internet economies uh, especially now that we've achieved almost one third of a population does have an access to mobile phone with you know 3g or 4g connectivity i think uh, we have to look into the bigger picture there and then uh, use that uh, to our effective uh, you know modulation of course so that's there yeah and dr ganpati uh, has uh, uh, yeah shared a comment yeah nice subject to talk about as almost everybody is on social media true sir i think it can be used for a bigger way for health promotion okay all right um kauri has some message uh, yeah Uh, what if the data record is lost due to some technical issue what about the record and if it's required considering the app is for record purpose uh, yes gauri now uh, what happens is uh, just to give a little bit of insight into that uh, now you could develop a system where the data gets stored and retrieved from your personal device uh, which is again the base for it you know in technical terms uh, what it's called uh, and uh, it could also be linked to a, a cloud server or you know a, an optimized uh, for it's an institution or anything uh, now related to your electronic data records uh, uh, they are equally vulnerable as to you know saying that what if your files and and documents get lost so when it comes to that i think we uh, we do have a lot of options to ensure that there's no security breach and uh, we can minimize uh, the error and definitely uh data getting lost uh, is is far more difficult in in the technical space or the digital space as compared to the uh, real this thing again it depends on uh, the size of information like i said you could customize it to your devices or uh, where it could be on your storage and again be protected uh, with the inbuilt system security and all of that or it could be linked to a server where uh, you could have a separate repository you could have like uh, like an edr uh, edp cell which is there in most of the uh, organizations which procure data from your op card your you know digital this thing so uh, only the establishment is 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 a uh, a a roadblock in that direction once we digitize uh, files and records and all of these things uh, i think uh, we are good to go yeah i hope that answers your query yes, sir backup backup is mandatory because yeah, the information absolutely. is going to pile up over the years sir so okay so yeah that was uh, the questions all right so uh if there's no other questions i think uh, we'll wrap up the session for today thank you so much again ivan that was uh, really good um i think we did uh, have a good uh, point of discussions and that that's the whole purpose of learning here and uh, you know look into the greater picture and uh, i think public and dentistry pgs uh, need to focus on that as well you know the digital avenue especially when the world is moving ahead uh, so i think uh, i i would put it this way that you know um, you have to you know digitize your uh method or whatever oral health intervention and awareness you could do that uh, but at the heart of it you want to humanize the experience so it's again people behind all of these things so this is in no way is going to you know replace the conventional ways what we are doing but it could really help as a very good boost or it could you know fall uh, fall in place and all of those things yeah i think uh, dr mansi is just connected in um, i want to quickly say hi <laughs> yes. hi dr mansi i think if you could hear us you can go ahead and uh share your thoughts yeah she just joined and i guess so once again uh, i think thank you ivan for uh, giving this lecture and for doing this for us and uh, we're really happy and of course uh, let me put a word to all the participants that yes this will be available on youtube for all of you to go back and refer we'll be sharing the presentation uh, as well in as uh, in our phd 101 student learning groups 
And uh, please do feel free to write to us if you need any specific queries, either from the, the speaker would be really happy to help or we could also give you some material in that sense. So thank you all so much. Uh, goodbye uh, and see you all soon. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity.